Hi, this is ET250, lecture 25, and today we're going to talk about AC versus DC and uh, uh, AC single phase versus three phase power. And uh, we're going to talk about what it means to be balanced. What is uh, balanced three phase power? Essentially means same magnitude frequency, and you have three single phases that are offset by one third of a cycle. We'll look at what a positive and negative sequence means, and then compare different configurations of Y and delta. Um, we'll, we'll look at the consequences of V line to line and V line to neutral voltages, where the actual the line to line voltage is actually bigger than the line to neutral by a uh, root three or 1.7 and leads by 30 degrees if we're talking about a positive sequence. For the line currents, uh, line currents versus a line to line current, uh, we'll see that the line currents is actually bigger, but it lags the line to line current by 30 degrees. Uh, we'll look at a common power distribution map and then look at some specifics like a, what does the stinger leg mean and a typical residential uh, power panel. And then the last thing we'll look at is the proof of why three phase power is actually smooth. And this will be cool because we'll look at an Excel document which actually computes everything and shows some consistency with the theory that we're presenting. All right, well, let's begin. So let's compare some uh, advantages and disadvantages between AC and DC. So let's look at some disadvantages first of DC. Well, it requires transistor technology. And back in the day, this was not available because because uh, the transistor technology is actually relatively recent. Um, it, uh, it's something that kind of came about. And now that we have it, my goodness, we got we got some wonderful, wonderful things like cell phones and uh, TVs and radios and uh, the internet. It's just so many amazing things with the transistor. But before they had it, uh, they couldn't quite uh, take advantage of the advantage of DC. Now, um, for DC, it also requires PWM or pulse width modulation. We'll see that in the next uh, next class, in, uh, sorry, the next semester class. And that's basically a square wave waveform that allows to, uh, us to modulate a DC voltage, okay? Um, DC can't use simple transformer technology to tap off power and step it up and step it down, right? Transformers are relatively simple. It's just coils of wire around steel, pretty nice, okay? Um, there's no zero point, so you have more complicated switches and breakers. AC, you have a uh, you know nice zero current points in the in the time, and so that's actually makes it, it makes it easier for the breakers to switch on and off. Okay. Um, now our present day infrastructure is AC. However, DC is coming. Right. We actually have the Pacific Inner Time. We have so many examples now where DC transmission is definitely coming into play in our new grid. All right. Now, what are some DC advantages? Well, you don't need to worry about maintaining the frequency and phase angle in a grid. Right. It's all DC. There's not no, no such thing as the frequency phase angle. All that is meaningless in some sense. Right. Uh, there's less wires, so you have a thinner corridor, right? That's uh, more economical, less things to maintain. So there's so many benefits to having just less wire. The other one is there's uh, no charging and discharging for your parasitic capacitance. So if you ever run wires, right, you have a high voltage oscillating back and forth, there's going to be some parasitic capacitance present. And so this would allow us to run DC cables underwater, underground, and that means there's a less electrical losses. This is a good thing, right? Typically we see these high voltage lines like high above, and, and that's uh, maybe an eyesore, right? So this, is, uh, this can be a benefit, right? And we actually are doing this now with DC systems. You can also reverse the power very quickly, right? So these are all great things about um, DC advantages. And like I said, it's coming, right? But right now we still gotta learn AC and our infrastructure is AC. Okay, now what about single phase versus three phase? I mean, we, we see single phase all the time, right? In fact, we might see single phase like what's coming out of our wall more often than we see three phase, right? So single phase, um, we know that the instantaneous power is oscillatory. Right, we've seen this over and over and over in the last few lectures. It lacks redundancy, right? If one phase goes out, you're done, right? That's it, okay? Um, it's available in households, 
Okay, now what about three phase? Well, it's naturally created by generators. And here's a picture of a student built electric generator, which is kind of cool. They 3D printed this. They have magnets spinning relative co to coils. And these three phase coils are being picked up, the, the voltage are, gonna, are being picked up on this isolated oscilloscope. And you can see this three phase waveform. So when you have these big monstrous generators, it's naturally creating three phase AC. So that's kind of nice, right? Now, can you use a three phase current to drive the motor? You sure can, so it works backwards. So if you give the motor three phase, it'll naturally drive them. We'll learn that in, uh, in the electrical machinery class later on next year, okay? Um, you can change the direction. If you flip any of the two of the three leads, then you can change the direction of rotation of this motor, right? Which essentially creates a positive or negative sequence that we'll talk about soon. Okay, now let's say you go, well, I want some redundancy. What if I had three single phase systems? Well, that's gonna cost you six wires. But what we can do is we can actually connect it up in a special way and only use three. So compared to three single phase wires, we're more economical in terms of our material. Um, we can connect it as wire delta to give us some flexibility in terms of the voltage, right? And as we'll show in the last uh, part of this lecture, the instantaneous power when you sum up all three is smooth. That's, it's kind of cool, all right? So let's look at this, uh, this term called balance. You might hear it a lot. And I want you to be very familiar with what it is and what are the assumptions and consequences. Okay, so you have three phases, right? A, B, and C. And what balance means is you have the same magnitude, same frequency, and the phase is offset by one third of cycle. This is what we mean by balanced. Okay. Now, if it's a positive sequence, it means the A phase leads the B phase leads the C phase. Okay. A negative sequence is just the reverse. All right. And so here's a picture of it. Notice, look at VA, just the typical cosine that we've been dealing with. And look at this is one period here. Okay. Now here's one third of a cycle and two thirds of a cycle. And notice the B is lagging by one third of a cycle and the C is lagging by another third of a cycle. So this would look balanced. An example of where it's not balanced is let's say the B is a little bit smaller in amplitude or not the same frequency or not perfectly 120 degrees or one third of a cycle out of phase. This, is, this would be a way to write it in terms of our phasor math. You'd say VA is equal to some magnitude. Look at, they all have the same magnitude. And look at the phase. This has a zero degrees phase. This has a minus 120, which means it's lagging by a third of a cycle because 120 is 360, is one third of 360. And this is minus 240. So you could say VC is either lagging by 240, right? Or leading the VA by 120. It's the same thing. You notice I put volt peak in this case, right? All right. So let's look at some configurations, right? So we have two different main, uh, configurations here. We have the um, Y and the Delta. And so let's just look at the Y first. And I wanna make sure that you are familiar with the terminology. Notice we have three phases connected as a Y and we have A, B, and C, and we have a neutral. Okay, the neutral's in the middle. All right, we have, now there, there's, uh, be careful here, there's six voltages that I have labeled. VAN, VBN, and VCN. Notice the positives are on the outside here and the minuses are touching the neutral, okay? And look at the first letter is A, the second letter is N. First letter is B, second letter is N. First letter C, second letter is N. Okay, so that's the middle here, right? Okay, good. These are your line to neutral voltages. A, B, C are your, line volt, are your lines and N is your neutral, okay? Now look at these outer voltages, V, A, B, V, B, C, V, C, A. Notice it's kind of like the head chasing the table. Tail, look at this, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, okay? V, A, B, V, B, C, and V, C, A are called your line-to-line -line voltages, all right? So this is the six voltages that you need to be aware of when looking at Y, okay? Now, uh, I, I'm just writing here what I just said, line-to-line -line voltages, okay? Now, I want you to note something. V, A, N, B, N, C, N, if this is balanced, are going to be 120 degrees off relative to each other. V, A, B, V, B, C, V, C, A are going to be 120 degrees off with respect to each other. 
We will talk about how VAB is related to VAN soon enough, okay? And there's going to be a 30 degrees off uh, uh, offset, okay? All right, good. Now let's look at the delta. The delta still is going to have the line voltages, A, B, C, just like we had here. Now there's no neutral, so we, there's no concept of A and B and C and in this case, just because there's nothing to connect to there, right? We still have VAB, notice the same thing, VAB, VBC, and VCA, right? And uh, again, if it's balanced, these three are gonna be offset without, uh, um, by 120 degrees, and we can operate it without a neutral, okay? So this is your Y and delta configuration. You just gotta be, you know, kind of look at the stare at it and just make sure you're up to date on all the terminology and bookkeeping. All right, so, a high level of why, why versus delta. I mean, there's many reasons. I can talk about a few here, right? But for a delta, uh, it's easy to add and remove load from a single phase, especially if the neutral is not accessible, right? So if I have a delta to connected motor, I could just pull a phase out and pop it in, right? Don't need to worry about finding the neutral. In fact, on three phase transformers, um, the nice thing about a delta to delta transformer is that if one phase fails, you still get three phase voltage and current, which is kind of cool. So there's some redundancy when using a delta, yeah. okay? Um, a Y might be nice because you, because you can access the new, if you can access the neutral to use it for grounding. Now on a ship, you actually don't use it for grounding by the way, right? But for this one, uh, you could if you wanted to. The other nice thing is actually the Y is easier to analyze mathematically, right? So. There are some benefits. There's definitely more than I have listed here, but um, at least you have a picture of what is Y and what is Delta. Okay. So then let's look at line to line versus line to neutral voltages. And like I said at the beginning of the class, line to line voltages, okay, would be this example here, A, B, B, C, and C, C, A. Those are line to line voltages. And we are claiming that the magnitude of these three voltages are bigger by square root of three, which is uh, 1.732, than these line to neutral voltages or VAN, VBN, VCN. We are also claiming that there is gonna be a plus or minus 30 degree phase shift between these two. Now it's positive if you have a positive sequence and it's negative if you have a negative sequence. Okay, so positive sequence A leads B leads C, then you would have something like this. VAB equals VAN times the square root of three times 30 degrees. And remember, when you multiply phasers, you add the phase. That's why you have the plus here, okay? And then the same for BC and BN and uh, CA and CN, not too bad. If it's a negative sequence, so if A lags B lags C, you would just flip the sign on that right there. Let's look at uh, this on a simulation and see if this is true, okay? All right, so I'm gonna switch over here. And I have a simulation of a positive sequence and I'm gonna run this. And I notice I have VAN, VBN, and VCN. And notice I just put one, VAB with the positive over here and the negative at B. So this is the line to line voltage here and the line to neutral voltage over there. Okay, now if we look at this oscilloscope, right? Look on the, the one on the left, look at VAB, it's the bigger one. I'm gonna pause this. The green one, the bigger one is VAB. And notice that it's not only bigger in amplitude by the square root of three, but it also is leading VAN in time by about 30 degrees, okay? Nice. All right, now let's look at this positive sequence. We can see it running here on the right. This is a plot of A, N, B, N, and C, N here on the right. And if I pause it again, since it's a positive sequence, we should see V, A, N leading V, B, N leading V, C, N. And so let's double check. V, A, N, you can see it in green. No, is that in green? That is in red, sorry. In red on this one, okay. Is that red? Green, sorry, green. And then V, B, N is red, yeah, red. And then V, C, N is orange, okay. So you can see green, red, orange, green, red, orange, green, red, orange, right? And so you can definitely tell that VAN is leading VBN, which is leading VCN, okay? If it was a negative sequence, then it'd be the opposite. And how, do, how would you plug that into the simulation? Check this out. You can define the amplitude and the phase. So VAN has a zero degree phase. 
VBN has a minus 120 degrees phase and VCN has a minus 240 uh, degree phase, whereas the amplitude of all these are the same to maintain, to maintain a balanced nature. Okay, pretty cool. All right, so let's go back. All right, what I wanna do now is mathematically show you why this is true. Okay, why is it that the line to line is bigger and why is it that there's a phase lead for a positive sequence? Okay, all right. So this requires some of your phaser tools, but this is kind of good practice, right? And so what we are claiming is this, right? And what we wanna start with is the fact that we have a balanced A and B and C. And so we're just gonna rewrite this. Now, what we can do is just look and analyze a simple three phase system and see if we get this result. So check this out, A and B and are known, we have it here, but let's say AB is unknown and we wanna see if AB actually is leading by 30 degrees and if AB is, is bigger by square root of three than this guy, let's double check. So if I look at this loop of voltages, this screams out to use KVL. So if I write a KVL minus VAN plus VAB plus VBN equals zero. Okay, nothing hard here. Remember the phaser math is so nice because it allows us to bring in our steady state tools. Okay, so I'm looking for this guy, VAB. So I can bring these over to the other side of the equation. VAB equals VAN minus VBN, no magic. And now I can plug in my known stuff, right? So VP angle zero and VP angle minus 120, good. And let's just go to the complex plane and just graphically look at what VAB will be. So. I know VAB equals VAN plus negative VBN, right? Same thing. And the reason why I'm doing plus, because I like to add vectors. It's a little bit easier for me to think about, okay? So this is minus VP angle negative 20 VP zero, good. And let's just see, what, what does VAN look like? We know VAN is gonna look like this. VAN is pointed somewhere this way, okay? Which way is VP minus 120 gonna look like, right? Which way is VP minus 120 gonna look like? Don't notice I don't put the negative sign. So minus 120 is kind of like this. Is that right? This is minus 120. So this is VP minus 120. Well, what is negative VP minus 120? Well, it's gonna look something like this, right? So this is negative VP minus 120, okay? And so if I add up these two vectors, I can just add up this one and this one, and I get something that looks like this. So this is your VBN, this is your negative VBN, this is your VA, and I'm just gonna add this up, this one plus this one, and let's look what we get. If I add up these two vectors, this is VAB, okay? So we have VAB relative to VAN. What do we notice? From the geometry, you, you can already see that this is leading, it's more counterclockwise. Okay, and so it's leading VAN by 30 degrees. Boom, that's the first one we can see. Okay, I am convinced. Can you also see that it's bigger? Uh, you can totally see it's bigger, right? And then the next question would be, well, how would you actually get this number? If I know this is VP, and if I know this is 30, can I get this number? Well, what do we have? We have 30 degrees here. We know this must be 60. We know this must be 120 to make 180. Okay, so we got some nice geometry facts. Mm. We know, oh, look at this. We know that we can make a 90 degree angle so we can have a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle here. So we've done this 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Okay, and we kind of have two of them. So we could actually, if we know this hypotenuse and we, we could find this length, right? In fact, if we know this, this is actually the root three over two of this, right? So that means this total length is just two times that, two times the root three over two times VP. And so the twos cancel and you get root three. So that's kind of a nice, easy geometric way of showing us that VAB is leading by 30 degrees and it's a square root of three larger, nice. And if it was a negative sequence, well, this would all be flipped and you'd be pointing down and you have the negative 30. Cool. All right, so what are the consequences of knowing this, uh, this guy here, the square root of three? So let's say you have a line to neutral voltage and a line to line voltage. You're measuring a motor or something like that, or you're looking at different voltage taps out of a, a transformer, okay? And so you might know that the line to neutral is 277. Well, now you can easily calculate what the line to line voltage is assuming it's balanced. It would just be a root three bigger and it'd be like 480. 
And so hopefully some of these numbers are kind of convenient and kind of not, I, would, I shouldn't say convenient, they're, you've heard them before, right? 277, 480 volts. Okay, what if the line to line is 208? Okay, well, you got to go backwards if you want to find the V line to neutral and you do one over root three. Oh, that's 120. Okay, so you're starting to see some of these common numbers like 120 coming out of your wall, 208, 480, 280, 277, right? These are some common voltages that I think you've heard of before. Okay, so always remember the line to line voltage is bigger than the line to neutral. Okay, that's kind of the takeaway. All right, let's look at the current, right? So let's look at the current. So the current, uh, a line to neutral current, and what do I mean by that? So let's say you have something like this. Okay. And notice it's not a voltage supply, it's just kind of like a load, right? And an impedance, right? This could be like your motor windings. Can you imagine this current coming in, we'll call I line, and then you have this current I line to line? This current here will be bigger than this one by root three. Can you see how it kind of like current divider splits off? So this is going to be a larger source current where these will be smaller currents, right? Okay. And this current here, if it's a positive sequence where you have A, B, C, will be lagging 30 degrees. And so this plus or minus depends on the positive and negative sequence, okay? And so you can, we can write it here where it's minus, kind of a little bit of the opposite of the before, right? Okay, okay, if it's negative, then you add, okay. And so let's look at a, sim a simulation of this to see if this is true. So I'm gonna share screen, go back to here and uh, check this out. I have a balanced positive sequence three phase source over here. So I have A, B, C, and then I have A, B, C here. And notice I have my line currents coming in and I'm expecting my line current to be bigger than my line to line current. So I have A, B, C here, okay. So let's look at, I have two ammeters, okay. And I'm, in the ammeter here, notice I have in the red line, the line current is bigger then to the line to line current. I know that sounds uh, confusing, line current, line to line current, but I, I hope you can pick up the distinction. And notice here the line current is bigger than the line to line by square root of three, and it's lagging. Notice the line, the bigger line current is lagging the smaller line to line current over here. Okay, so this is an example of uh, what we're looking for. All right. Now again, let's go and see if we can show ourselves via phasor math if this is true, okay, theoretically. So it's the same kind of deal that we just did. The only difference instead of KVL, we can use KCL, right? So again, we're gonna set up our three currents. Let's say we know their positive sequence and we know their offset by 120 degrees, A, B, C, right? Same amplitude, okay, so balanced, okay? So let's write the same Z, 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 right? Some resistor inductor combination, right? Sure, and you have line current and the line to line. Okay, if you do a KCL, what do we notice? I, A, B, this one, E plus uh, I, these two currents, right? I line A plus I, C, A is I, A, B, good. And let's say I want to solve for the I line. Well, that's easy. I just bring this over, okay? And I can plug in my phaser. So what, I have I, P, zero and minus I, P, minus 240, good. Okay, and again, we can just add graphically. It's going to look very similar to the other one. And look at this, minus ICA. So what do we have? I'm going to flip this around just so that we see what's going on. So if IP, we could say this IAB is going to the right. So IP angle zero. Okay. All right. So what is this? IP with an angle of minus 240. IP with an angle of minus 240. That's kind of like this, right? And then the negative of that is kind of like this. Okay, do you guys see that? All right, and that's drawn here. Look at this, this is ICA, this is minus ICA, okay, right? And so if I shift this over here, because I like to add vectors, this is the line current. And notice the same exact length relationship. You get a 30, 120, 30, or if you cut in half, you get a 30, 60, 90. So this is gonna be root three bigger than this. And notice it's 30 degrees here. So it's gonna be lagging this one, okay? So it's the same exact proof as before. So I hope at the end of the day, you remember the line current is bigger than the line to line current. It's easier to remember this fact that it has a bigger amplitude. It's, 
I do want you to memorize that as a plus or minus 30, but you can always just pull this out just to remember, right? If you know how to do this quick little derivation, you can always remember, is it the plus or is it the minus 30? Okay, good. So let's look at a typical power distribution map, right? So let's see if I can zoom in here. Can I zoom in? Ooh, look at that, nice. Yes, excellent, okay. So, you know, it might be instead of zooming in what we might do. Oh, no, it actually focuses nicely. Good. So if we look at this power distribution map, look how we have your power plant right here. Okay. And uh, it is advisable to step up uh, the power to a much, much higher voltage. Look at this, 20, 220 kV. And so they have some step up transformers. And the question is, why would you do that? Why would you step it up? Well, Remember, power is current times voltage, right? If you have a high voltage, then you have you can run a low current for the same amount of power. So you have low electrical line losses, low I squared R losses, right? Um, why why is this bad though? If you get close to a home, uh, 220 kV, this will reach out and touch you and kill you instantly, right? So it's very dangerous but very economical. All right. So then as you get closer to your cities, you might step it down right down to 66 kV or 33 kV. And then maybe a step it down further, right, as you start to distribute it. Right. So these are your long distance transmission lines. These are your regional lines. OK. And then what you might do is you get get it down to 16 kV or 4 kV right in that range. OK. So now you got these three phase systems going all throughout your city. All right. All throughout your city. And maybe you have a neutral. OK. So you might have three to four wires going through. So if you have a house, maybe you just pull off two and you get a single phase, right? Or you might go to industry and you get some three phase and you can do some Y, Y, Y transformers, Delta, Delta transformers, Y, Delta transformers, all these different, uh, and look at all these voltages, 480, 270, 240, 120, all these common numbers, depending on if it's Y or Delta, okay? Now, if you're at a residential, you might pull off and look at the center tap. You guys kind of did this in a lab. You might center tap here and you might get like 100, 120, 120, 240, right? So you might have phase A, phase B and, and neutral. And I'll show you actually a picture of my own home panel that has this, okay? Um, those little cans that you see on the telephone poles, those are actually transformers in there, pulling off and transforming it down to 120 or 240, okay? You might see something like this, right? Uh, where you could ground the neutral, right? And look at these 277, 480, that's a square root of three difference, right? Now you know where that uh, voltage difference comes from, right? Okay, look at here, 1228, no problem, same thing. And then the last thing, look at this. This has a, a delta, secondary of a delta, and they have a center tap, and you have 120, 120, 240, good. And then this might be 240 here, but look at uh, the, the, the paper got it wrong. It's actually 208, and I'll show you why. But you might have something what we call a stinger leg, right? Okay. So this is just a typical power distribution uh, map that uh, has some of the common numbers that we just talked about. Kind of nice. All right, let's keep going. So let's kind of zoom in on this stinger leg situation, right? You have 120 here, you have 240, you might have two hots, you got your ground, you center tap it off the ground. But then from here to here, we call it a stinger leg because it's very hot, right? Here's 120 hot, you know, 120, but then this one might be 208. It's like, why? Why is that 208 and why is it not 240? right? Or 187, as they quoted here, right? Well, again, you can pull in your phaser math, right? You can say, well, this is 120. Sorry, let's, let's say this is 240 with an angle of zero, and this is 120 with an angle of 120. You can just punch that in your calculator and just add it up, right? So this would be 240. And if I converted this to rectangular minus 60 plus 103.92J, right? You could add this up. These add up, and you would get 208 angle 30, right? So this is telling us that this stinger voltage relative to the ground is a 208 with a phase lead of 30 degrees relative to this branch, okay? And we could even see that on the simulation, kind of cool. So let's go over there. So check this out. So I have again the balance three phase. I have, let's say the secondary of a transformer here. Uh, this voltage, let's say, is 240, and this voltage here from the ground to this hot is 120. So is the ground to this hot over here is 120. But then I put a probe from this point here all the way to here, and you can see that it is 208 volts RMS. 
I'm also plotting all three. And if you if you can see this, let's see, I'll, I'm going to put this here. If I look at this probe, see how it's the 208 voltage on here, but it's leading the 240 voltage by 30 degrees. Kind of nice. And you also see that this 120 uh, is, is in there as well. All right. So this would be example of a stinger leg or your 120 volt in potentially a home or residential setting. Okay. All right, let's go back to the uh, presentation here. And so let's look at a typical residential setting, right? Um, and I just wanted to, the reason why I did, I, I want to show this is I just want to show how something is connected residentially and how the single phase stuff relates to your three phase stuff. So yes, you might get your hot, hot stinger, right? You got your three phase. Okay. Now, how would you hook it up to one of these guys? Let's say, right? Your little wall outlets, right? Well, you have your little small lead and your black lead that actually goes to one of the hots. It could go to this one or this one. And now your white lead is what we call the neutral path, right? And so this neutral path is different than the ground path, okay? So the ground path, typically they use bare copper. This is a white sheath or white insulated line, and this is a black line. So that's just kind of a typical color scheme for residential, all right? So let me, let me just write here, this is your neutral, all right? Now you notice two separate paths are here, right? And the idea behind two separate paths is if the neutral fails, let's say that you had some failure here, and you in the hot, the black accidentally had a, a, a ground fault, right? There would be a safe path of current through the ground fault and not through you. Okay, so this is good practice to have two lines running from the ground here, the center tap ground all the way to both the neutral and ground. Now here's a bad practice. This is a bootleg ground practice, right? Don't do this. Okay, this will work, right? You just take that ground and you just attach it right here to the neutral and you just run a single cable, it'll work, right? So this would be the hot and uh, the ground, right? But you can accidentally energize the housing if when you're installing, you just forgot and you just flip both leads, that would be bad, right? Um, and you don't have any of this protection. So don't do this, this is good, okay? All right, so this is just a residential. And here's a picture of actually my house panel, okay? And you can see some of this going on. Okay, so notice the original installers had labeled this big cables neutral. So that's gonna be this one, there are neutral or ground, right? That's this big guy here. And you can even see uh, there's, a, there's that ground tab here. So this neutral is actually shorter to this ground that goes outside the house and a spike into the ground. These two ends here are these two hots, okay? So that's these two guys here. And notice all the white wires are all these neutral wires. Okay, and then there's a separate ground copper uh, path that's going to all the junction boxes in my house, right? Now, what do these two wires do? Well, I could use some of these hots for, you know, maybe half the house and the other hots for the other half of the house, right? So I have other uh, connectors here, or sorry, um, 120 volt outlets there. Some are using this as the black lead and this is the black lead, okay? Uh, and then my washer, uh, my uh, laundry machine is using both ends. So instead of just 120, I'm getting 240 across here, right? To my washing machines, right? And you got your different breakers going on. So this is a, just a picture of a typical residential. Now, is the stinger shown here? No, the stinger's not shown in this case. I, I just have the one phase. But um, yeah, I hope this kind of helps visualize exactly what's going on in a residential. Okay, the last thing I wanna look at is um, why three phase power, I made that claim, why is three phase power constant? And why does it equal three times the single phase power? Um, I want to go through this just because it kind of shows you the, the theoretical perspective, but then I also want to plot it out in Excel. So we'll switch back to Excel. And I hope it just convinces you the benefits of three phase. Okay. So we know that uh, if we want to total up the power, we could just add up the three phases, right? Okay. And that would mean that each phase is just voltage times current right? Voltage time current, voltage time current. And we just talked about how these are all, uh, what do you call it? Balance, same amplitude um, offset by 120. Okay, so we have this. So let's, let's carefully look at this. VABC has zero minus 120 minus 240. Now notice this theta V kind of sneaks in there because it's all offset relative to each other. So they all have to have the same theta V, but this is offset 120 to this one. This is offset 240 to this one. 
Okay, same amplitude, same frequency. Again, same frequency here, but now it has a theta i. Same pattern, but theta i. So it's theta i minus 120, theta i minus 240, but same amplitude relative to each other. Okay, good. Now we just need to multiply them. So I can just take this, these two, and then these two, and then these two, multiply them together, no problem. Okay, and I look at that, yeah, it's exploding, but I'll show you some simplifications that occur and it's really nice. So there's this trig identity where if you multiply two cosines, you subtract the arguments and add the arguments, you add the whole thing and you multiply it by one half. Okay, so we can follow that pattern where A is this one and B is this one, or A is this one, B is this one, A is this one, B is this one, not too bad. Okay, so the first one, what do we get? we get one half, so I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna pull out the VPIP, good. And so if A, I have A minus B, notice I have A minus B, good. And then here I have A plus B plus A plus B, good. Okay, I'm gonna to do the next one. A minus B, good, and A plus B, good, no problem. And then I'm gonna do the last one, A plus B, or A minus B, A plus B. And you notice I'm canceling out this minus omega T, this 120 omega T and this 240 omega T. So that's good. So one, two, three are all the same. That's kind of nice, right? Okay. So it's just a theta V minus theta I, theta V minus theta I, theta V minus theta I. And you've seen this before, that's the power angle, right? Now these ones stay, look at this. I have two omega T theta V plus theta I, two omega T theta V minus, Theta and so on and so forth, right? So I'm going to group these together because it's just three times that. Okay, good. Plus these three guys, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now here's the cool thing. If I convert these to phasers, look what happens, okay? I have an, a phase of zero, which is minus 240. And re re remember, minus 240 the same, is the same as positive 120. And minus 480 is actually the same as minus 120. So it looks like this on a phasor diagram. Look at this, if I add these three phasors, bink, 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 they go to zero. So this whole thing cancels out. I'm just left with this. That means that the instantaneous power for this balanced three phase system has no dependence on time. All the time ones got canceled. So it's just three times VRMS, IRMS times cosine of theta V minus theta I. And if you remember that, that is, this is the equation for a single phase. So the instantaneous power is constant and is equal to three times the real power equation of a single phase. That's kind of cool. That's a neat result. And so I was like, is that really true? I mean, I'm sure it's true, but could I go on Excel and plot it out and see if this is the case? And I did and check this out. So let's go to Excel. All right, so look at this. What we have here is I have a V peak and an I peak. And I have, let's say 60 Hertz, which is 377 radians per second. I've defined theta V, A, B, and C as zero minus 120 minus 240. And I've of course converted it to their radian values because Excel likes radians. I've defined a theta I as minus uh, 30 minus 150 minus 270, and then again have converted it to the radian form. All right, because I know theta i and I know uh, VA and V uh, and IA, I can actually calculate using the formula, right? IRMS, VRMS, cosine of theta V minus theta i. And I get 8.6 watts, which if I multiply it by three is 25 watts, okay. So this is my predicted value of what the instantaneous power should be at any moment is 25.98 watts. But now I can do it the hard way. I can look, I can plot out a bunch of time and I can actually plug in my cosine. Look at this. This is IP cosine of omega T, which is the first column plus theta IA, right? If I go to the next one, VIA is what? VIA is VP times cosine of omega T plus theta VA. And then the power of the first one is just V times uh, V times I. I do the same thing for B here, C uh, and so on. And then at the end, I just add up all the powers, right? So this power is just uh, PA plus PB plus PC. And I do it for every single time step. Check this out. Look at this column. No matter where we are in time, it is computing the same number 
zero seven six and it is constant the instantaneous power is constant for all this kind of cool and here i have plotted on on uh on this figure here is everything iava um icvc uh, ibvb and then the power so let's look at this this is the voltage this is va vb vc this is ia ib ic okay this is the product these are the what is it pa pb pc right and uh this is the average 25.98 okay pretty cool stuff here that all the theory matches up and you could even point by point calculate it out this is all saved on, under the class so you guys can check it out and also of course the links to the um, links to the simulations are in the description all right that concludes my lecture i hope you learned a lot i know it was a lot but uh if anything was confusing just go back rewind watch it again but i, I appreciate your attention have a good day